All right, everybody, it is Wednesday, July 13th. A lot to go over today. First of all, inflation. We got the number for June CPI, 9.1% inflation running hot. As a matter of fact, running hotter than even the worst forecasts. And I looked over the data from the, um, the report, and it was really, most of that was concentrated in energy energy products, fuels, gasoline, um, that sort of stuff. And, you know, that is completely understandable. I mean, we got these sanctions. You still got supply chain issues, but mainly the sanctions. And as long as those sanctions stay in place, it's going to be tough to see energy prices coming down. And not to mention the fact that U.S. is a net exporter of oil and petroleum products. Actually, I should tell you that in the in the latest week ending July 8th, uh, the U.S. balance flipped just slightly positive, or I should say slipped uh, to net importer, but only by 28,000 barrels a day. But um, if you look at the four-week average, we're still a net exporter, and I suspect that flip to net importer the week ending July 8th that's going to be like a one week deal we'll flip back as as a net exporter so as long as we're exporting our oil and you know there was there was a lot of coverage of this because all that SPR oil you know the strategic petroleum reserve uh, you know that's a lot of that's getting exported so I mean that's going to the benefit of foreigners I've been telling you guys this it's been it's been covered in the news media so it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody so it was mainly all concentrated in energy there was also housing costs in there you know housing prices have not really come down rent prices are soaring and I still say that housing cost really is a function of supply and we just do not have enough housing stock and there's a growing population there's a need for housing and there's not enough housing stock you know what are we doing like uh, 1, 1.7 million uh, units annually I mean that's still way below historic peaks in the housing market historic peaks have usually happened when this country builds two million or two million plus annually of new home of homes and you know it took us from the great financial crash in 2009 you know when it was all the way down to like 300,000 annual and what we're 13 years on we're only at 1.7 million annual so it's a it's a function of of supply there's not enough housing stock and so that's just going to keep prices up i mean they may come down a little bit because interest rates are going up and that affects affordability but i mean you just don't have enough enough housing it's simple um what else Let, let's talk about the fiscal because very interesting developments yeah i went over the numbers from the daily treasury statement yesterday was actually a positive flow if you recall my video yesterday if you watched it i said that we probably had a net drain because the market was down and i'll get into today's market in a second which was also down um, yesterday actually was a positive flow we had a 17 billion positive flow net which means after taxes 17 billion that is a decent day is at least in by recent historical comparison that is a decent positive flow day but the market was still down by the way that 17 billion positive flow net flow it boosted the July deficit uh, fiscal deficit up to a hundred billion that's good I mean we haven't seen a hundred billion monthly deficit since February so I mean that that was very good and I suspect that today when we see today's numbers and tomorrow's uh, Treasury statement I suspect today was a positive fiscal flow day too because there was a Social Security payment today so the market kind of deviated from recent behavior where we're seeing the positive flows 
and we got a sell-off. We got a sell-off yesterday, we got a sell-off today. The sell-off today was understandable based on the, I mean, we were up in the morning before that CPI data came out and then it, the market just uh, turned right around and went south when it saw that number. By the way, I should add that if you look at uh, the futures markets, Fed fund futures are now pricing in a 74% probability of a 100 basis point rate hike at the July 27th meeting. So the 75 basis point rate hike, which was expected, and remember that was already an elevated uh, level from you know uh, a month ago what was expected, that is down to a 26% probability. So it's jumped up to a full percentage point. Actually, uh, the Bank of Canada today also raised rates by a full percentage point, 100 basis points. So now the markets are expecting the Fed to go a full point, a full 1% at the July 27th meeting. We'll see what happens. There's still, we still got plenty of time or two weeks until that meeting and expectations can change. But boy, it changed big time today for a, a much uh, more aggressive hike, 100 basis points. So let me get back to this fiscal stuff because I think it's very important, you know, and it's, it's the core of what I talk about here every single day. So yesterday we had a net positive 17 billion flow. That is very good. I mean, that should have uh, resulted in a market rally. Didn't happen. Today we had a net, I'm just assuming, but it's probably going to be a net positive fiscal flow because today was a Social Security payment market was down again today. So that is a deviation from the pattern or what is normal. I like to say normal because that money gets, you know, deployed into bank accounts. It gets dispersed into bank accounts and then, then it gets, some of that money typically gets deployed into the markets. But it didn't happen. We had the market sell off both days, yesterday and today. What did happen, however, was we saw Treasuries rally. Treasuries rallied yesterday. I mean, it wasn't a big rally, and Treasuries, they went down initially today when uh, that CPI report came out, but then they ended up closing up. So what might be happening is that these flows, this money, you know, flowing into bank accounts is being deployed not in stocks necessarily, or as it used to, as what used to be the case, but now it's going into treasuries. I think that's the play right now. I think if you want to, uh, um, I think you need to position yourself along the bond market right now. I mean, there are many ways to do that. You could do that, you know, by buying uh, actual cash treasuries. You could buy TLT, which is the 20-year uh, treasury ETF, or uh, futures, for example, or calls on TLT. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do that, but I, I think now we're starting to see that shift, and it also comes on a day. Remember, this comes on a day when the market was pricing in a 100 basis point rate hike expectation for July 27th at that meeting, and Treasuries rallied on that. So we had two days of big um, positive net fiscal flows and you see where the money went to. It went into the bond market. So take that as your cue. It doesn't mean stocks you know, are going to tank. It just means that we're, we're seeing now uh, where investors are choosing to place that, those funds. And now it, it, you know, the bond market is, is, looks is starting to look, at least for some, a little bit more attractive, and we're seeing flows move to the bond market. But but the 100 billion um, deficit for July, I mean, that's good. That's good. We're still below where we need to be. Again, I'll go over the numbers again. We had that net drain of 324 billion in April, right? Then we had the the 86 billion uh, deficit in. Uh, in uh, May. Then we had the 54 billion deficit in June, so that's 140 billion. All right, so we're still, um, we're still down, wait, 324 billion uh, in April drain. Then we had the 86 billion 
uh, de deficit in May. I'm just running this off the top of my head now. We had the 54 billion in June. Okay, that's um, 140, and now we got 100 billion, so that's 240. We're still down like 100 billion from what the what happened in April when it, 324 billion got sucked out. So even with July now with a hundred billion deficit, we're still a hundred billion below liquidity wise. You know, that's significant. That is significant. Let me talk a little bit about uh, the EIA weekly petroleum status report today. Big, big declines in demand. Okay, we saw a huge drop in gasoline demand. I guess what happened was the prior week, the week ending July 1st, there was a big increase in gasoline demand, I, and I think I talked about that. That was the week leading up to the July 4th holiday weekend, so people probably, and we had a price, prices came down a little bit, so I guess, uh, you know, because people were traveling over the holiday weekend, that boosted demand. It came way down. As a matter of fact, it was the biggest, I think it was the biggest decline in seven months demand. Uh, that was gasoline demand. Distillate demand dropped the most in six months. Jet fuel demand dropped the most, uh, it was either in three or four months. So big declines in demand for fuel. Um, crude oil exports were up a little bit, I think about 400,000 barrels per day. They were like just around 3.1 million uh, barrels per day, crude oil exports. Uh, product exports fell sharply, all right, to the point where, like I said, the balance flipped to slightly net importer, the U.S., in the week ending July 8, 28,000 barrels a day. It's like basically nothing. It's like basically flat. Uh, so the, and by the way, uh, crude inventories were up. Um, they were up about 3.3 million barrels, I believe, but that came about as a result of a 6.9 million barrel drawdown in the SPR. So, you know, that SPR oil went into private inventories. Uh, if it wasn't for that a six point, almost seven million draw in SPR, we probably would have seen a draw in crude inventories and private inventories. Um, gasoline inventories were up and distillate inventories were up. By the way, the crude oil right now, if you look at inventories year over year, I think they're down only something like two and a half percent. So basically the year over year deficit in crude oil inventories, that's gone. I mean, we're, we're where we were last year. So if you want to use that as a guide, like where was price last year based on those inventories, you know, you might look back, that might have been $65, $70 a barrel, I don't know. Um, markets are still, if you look at the, um, the term structure of the, of the oil market, I mean, if you look at those spreads, you know, they, they're down now like four or five days in a row, but there's still, there's still a very acute and a sizable backwardation in the market. I mean, so unless that thing flips back around to a contango, the, the, the structure, the term structure right now it, is, still, is still saying that there's tightness. So we'll see what happens there. I mean, it has been coming down, but we got something like a two and a half dollar premium in the spot over the next uh, nearby futures contract. So that's, that's interesting because oil has been, you know, relatively weak based on where it's been over the last, you know, month, month and a half. What else is going on? Oh, the Euro! <laughs> the Euro made it today, just eked out a print, a very uh, quick print under $1. I think I saw uh, point, 0 0.9998 uh, cents. Um, so, you know, 99.98 cents. And then we popped up. There was like a vicious uh, little short covering rally intraday that popped us up over um, 101. I did some selling up there. I shorted some up there. And then I think we ended up the day around 
1.006 something like that so we'll see we'll see that that one you know that parity level it's it's uh, proving itself to be formidable I postulated yesterday that maybe the ECB is there defending that level because like it's a big psychological level I don't know I don't have any evidence of that I'm just saying that you know it kind of looks like somebody big is there defending that level I mean every time we get down to one dollar uh, it can't really break through and it rallies every time unless everybody's just so short and and you know waiting for it to break I think it will break I mean you know if you look at uh, as I've been saying if you look at uh, policies of the eurozone right now with regard to the sanctions the uh, the ban on Russian oil uh, the uh, the shift in the current account balance of Germany you know all this stuff the economic trends uh, the position of the ECB what's it going to do I mean it just that just points to a lower euro so we'll see so anyway that's it for today folks it was a lot of action unfortunately we had another pullback in the stock market but the flows were positive and it looks to me now like you know the bond market is the play but uh, stay tuned anyway if you want a copy of my um, MMT trader remember I'm the only one who has an applied approach to MMT I take the concepts and understandings of modern monetary theory and I apply them to trading and investing in the financial markets go to my website www.pitbulleconomics.com sign up for a 30-day free trial bye